Hi, and welcome to this uh, module two in the cloud integration course, where we'll look at how you can actually create your first iFlow. Uh, in this iFlow, we will go through a, a few different steps. So we'll create an iFlow. We will create a HTTP call that's routed through the CPI. Then we will call the SAP language service as a backend to understand what's going on there and just return this uh, response to the user. Um, so the tool we want to use for, for testing this is uh, a, a REST-based tool and I prefer using uh, Postman. Uh, you can get it at postman.com and it is really easy to craft uh, the API or craft uh, URLs that you want to call and reuse them and stuff like that. Otherwise, the SOAP UI also have options uh, in REST uh, and it's useful also for, for doing uh, web services for REST. So, so get those two tools. And obviously, if you're a Unix uh, geek or something like that, you probably want to use uh, VGET or something like that. But I don't need to tell you that how that they work. Um, so in the iFlow, you have some different options. You have the option to, to go into edit. And once you press edit, you have the option to save. Uh, save would, would save it, the current version as a draft. Um, and you have version and will allow you to create a new version number. And with one of the latest support packages, it's actually possible from uh, to go back in and see previous versions. And then you can deploy that will make this uh, go live and we'll see how that works. So uh, yeah, we'll use the SAP backend as a uh, as backend source. So you probably need to register at API dot sap.com and the, the changes will probably occur during this process. Um, so the different steps we want to go through in this is we first want to create a package that can house these uh, iFlows that we have created. Then we want to create a, an iFlow. We want to save it. We want to deploy it. We want to run this um, and see how it starts. I think that's it. So let's get started. So uh, here's the link to the API business app. And if I and here we can see we have this language detection. It has an option here that says we want to need to log in to get this. And I am logged in with my is user. Um, so we can try it out. I'm not sure if this is working. Um, so here we can see if we're sending this, it detects it as English and get these uh, response headers. Um, I did see at a previous call, it was also possible to see, yeah, you can see the payload and see how it works out. Good. So what we want to do now is want to create a new iFlow and I will go to my CPI tenant. I have these... Uh, links here so I can just go directly to it. I like the start uh, start me. Um, and here I have the predefined content that it goes into. I want to go into the design. I want to create a new package. And here you can group these into some business objects that or scenarios that look alike. So you, you would have a finance, you would have uh, an HR, or you may have HR dot uh, synchronization, you may have, and, and depending on what you want here. Version, yeah. So obviously these are not that required. In in the package, you have some, some description you can use for it. You have the artifacts. You have the, here you have the option to upload uh, any, any document you want. Um, so you can refer to these at a later point and you can add uh, business information if you want uh, to do that. Um, so now we want to create our airflow. We simply just, we need to be in edit mode. So if you have saved it, um, 
So if you just open an iFlow, it will be in this state. So you need to go into edit mode. You need to say like, s add iFlow and you need to give it a name. Um, you can specify description if you want to uh, give the, a bit more information about what is happening. So um, here you get this uh, information. Now we can open it. We have created the iFlow, and here we have the center. We can we, oh we need to go into edit mode. So we can see here we have configure, uh, deploy and delete. If we go into edit mode, we have a save and save as version as deploy. So here is the sender, let's just call it Postman. And here we will call this sub API. So we will take, so we connect from the Postman service to here. And then we can see we get a list of all the adapter types that's available for this scenario. And we want to select the HTTP. And here we just need to specify a URL we want to use for it um, we probably want to uncheck this one so this cross -type script forgery token that it's disabled and that's okay um, we also just want to use this user we could obviously select other authentication if we wanted to but this is a pretty good setting for it then we want to send our message to the API and the way it will be easiest is just to go here, copy this request URL. Want to do a post. We don't want any authentication because that is done using the. So here it says it needs a API key. So you have here a code snippet. This is pretty interesting. So here you can see what are the requests that it's actually doing and uh, since we have oh, copy and close we have postman installed so in postman you have the option to say import paste text file and then you can actually put it in and if that worked out Maybe it's the uh, documentation part it doesn't like. So now we can actually see, we can call this, we got an API key for it. So we can enter some kind of a text, we want to validate it. Uh, invalid JSON string. Just check this out. And it determines that with 99% probability, this is Danish. So this works pretty well. And we can now call this service direct. And the, the good thing about using this uh, tryout and code snippet is we can actually see what the request would look like in curl uh, what we need to do there. Um, so now we can go back to our CPI. And so if we send this directly, it will just go through it. But we want to just also set these uh, values in the CPI. And the way we would do that is simply just to create a content modifier. And we will then give it a name. City API key. We have some different options, and I'll go through this in one of the next modules about the content modifier. But we want to create a header, and this is the HTTP header that we're sending. And this then needs to be this. We'll just use the constant. We will also set the content type. And then we actually ready to deploy this. So we want to deploy it. So 
So now we have deployed our iFlow and we actually read it and we can see it sets deploy here and then it gives us this toast once it's deployed. And this toast means that we are ready to execute the scenario. Uh, so we need to wait until that, otherwise we will not get it. And the best easy way to, to get into the monitoring application is just to duplicate your flow and it will say, hey, it doesn't work, it's okay. We just need to go to our iFlow we can then see uh, we have this uh, CPI course flow. We got the URL here. So we will create a new URL. Type post. We will do authentication, uh, basic authentication. And here we need to use, use our username. We uh, then in our body need to set the body we got from the other request here so it's oh here this one the request the incoming uh, the incoming request oh, we just set it as raw set as application JSON we got our uh, send now it should hopefully work. We can see we're getting the same result. And let's see, we can see we have executed the CPI flow. Um, we can see it's in info. Uh, so it seems like we have called this information. And if we go back to here, we can also check out the headers. We can see that this is uh, yeah, our API key, our sub CPI message ID. And this is the one, if you take this one, you can search for it here and find that specific message that corresponds to this. So we can see that we have now called the the iFlow uh, or the backend service through the, the, the uh, CPI system and we're getting data back. Obviously, there's a lot of room for improvement in this one. We can uh, format it a little differently. So let's just try one small addition and that would be that instead of just setting the API key we would also set the full flow and I haven't scripted this so this may not work but let's see um, so if we just set this one to text now and set our string so now in here we can then set an expression Oh, that's the wrong one I wanted. This one. Here we, got the per, here we got the request. So what I want to do is, in my CPI flow, I have the option of replacing some of these values. And we can use Groovy. Uh, in... expressions or a camel expression for this so this will be replaced in runtime so let's see if this works we'll try to deploy it it says triggered for deployment if it, there's any errors you'll see them here and we can see it's now deployed so let's see if this works first flow it should be plain no content in it And we are getting the data back, and if so, um, this gives us a, a pretty good understanding about what what's happening. Uh, some of these uh, these ideas and the content modifier is really good at just setting up mock data that we want to be testing with. And we can obviously have been putting in the, the test data in the beginning here and just tested out how that worked, and then continued from that one on. Uh, but I do hope that this gives you an idea about what you can do with the data. In the next module, we'll look at how you can actually monitor some of these different things. So uh, thanks.